Hello and welcome everyone to Natural Grocers Nutrition Education Presentation. We are pleased to present Neil Edward Levin from Now Foods. He is the Senior Nutrition Education Manager and Product Formulator for Now Foods, a board certified clinical nutritionist and a natural products retailer for over three decades. Neil is an international lecturer, an award-winning natural products industry champion, and, a co and the co-founder and longtime officer of the American Nat Nutrition Edu Association. Neil is also director of both the Mid-America Health Organization and the National Clinic Clinical Nutrition Certification, Certification Board, and is, is the former technical advisor to the non-GMO project. So pleased to introduce Neil Levin. Welcome, Neil. I'm glad to be with you, Janine, and hello to everyone who's joining us today. And today we're going to be talking about scent aromatherapy and essential oils. Uh, these are products from Now. Uh, now was founded in 1968 and uh, has been manufacturing natural products for that time. And the mission of Now is to provide value in products and services that empower people to lead healthier lives. Value, of course, means the best quality for a reasonable price. So the difference between Now and other brands, uh, we, we really take a lot more effort to test and have quality processes. We're the largest family owned and operated company in the natural products industry. Uh, we have sustainable practices and charitable giving. And being family owned is very important because it means we can do things for the right reasons and not just to satisfy shareholders or people that we owe debt to. We're actually a debt free company and that allows us to make decisions much faster and more long term than most other companies, such as our determination to spend a lot on quality. So we're talking about essential oils and what are essential oils? These are the concentrated oils that come from plants, specific plants, specific parts of plants, and they're the volatile oils. Volatile means they're lighter than air. They're the ones that float in the air like clouds and they present a scent to our noses by molecules of that oil floating through the air, entering our nose, hitting receptors, and then we can smell the oils, just like we smell foods or flowers or anything else. And we are not the new kids on the block. We've been selling essential oils for over 30 years, and we have a commitment to provide only high quality essential oil products. As you see, our labels have changed a lot over that time. And we are continually improving not just the labels, but packaging and the testing of the oils themselves. So how are essential oils used? That's really not the focus of this presentation today, but the way that we use essential oils are to inhale them, for example, making a steam treatment, diffusing them in a diffuser, and we do offer electronic ultrasonic diffusers that use ultrasound instead of heat to make the oil come into the air to diffuse the oil. Uh, you can add certain oils to the bath if they're diluted and you have to be careful. It, it, it can make the bathtub oily. So you want to use it near the drain. Typically, you know, there's there's some precautions there. Uh, massage, of course, you can dilute uh, a, a carrier oil. And a carrier oil would be an oil such as almond oil or coconut oil, for example, uh, olive oil even. You, uh, there's many of them, but you can dilute them with essential oils and you only use about 1% up to 3% essential oil to scent a carrier oil. So that's important to note if you're using it to add to another oil, to add a scent to an oil or a candle or anything like that. The typical ratio is one to 3% of essential oil in a product. You can uh, make cleaning solutions with diluted oils and beauty products, natural topical items, but there's a, there's a big caution. Natural essential oils are very, 
very concentrated. They should be used only with care. Each product has suggested usage and cautions, but our labels are only for aromatherapy and other uses such as adding to your own cosmetics or topical items or even using them topically. Uh, you really need to look up the appropriate use. There's no room on the label to add that kind of information. And the FDA allows only one category per label. So we're not even allowed to put food grade on food grade oils if it's labeled for aromatherapy. Uh, it would be illegal. But uh, we do have information I'll be presenting later uh, in a few minutes talking about those uses. Now, the typical way that essential oils are made is a, a fresh essential oil, a, a fr a fresh essential oil source, a plant material, specific genus, species, part of the plant harvested at the optimum time when the volatile oils are at their greatest. Uh, typically within 12 to 24 hours of harvest, they're put in a stainless steel vessel, steam is applied, and all of the volatile oils come out in the steam. One, one steam process removes all the oils from the plant materials. Then you separate the oil and water. That is your basic essential oil. There are some oils that are what are called fractionally distilled. For example, you might remove an unpleasant odor from an essential oil or a toxin even from an essential oil by distilling out one fraction of that oil in a secondary process. But you can't steam the plant material again and get a second essential oil it's always the first pressing or the, or the first steaming. Uh, I did mention pressing because some essential oils are made by pressing the plant materials with a stainless steel spiked roller. And those are typically the citrus oils, uh, olive oil, uh, orange oil, lime oil, lemon oil, those kind of oils are typically pressed rather than steam distilled. That means there is a difference in a cold pressed oil and a steam distilled oil. Not only are the cold pressed oils raw, and they remain raw, by the way, if you put them in a diffuser that uses ultrasound instead of heat, they're still raw at that point. But you're getting not just the volatiles, you're getting other oils when you press instead of steam distillation. So because you might have non-volatile oils in a cold pressed oil, then that means it might leave a ring in a diffuser, for example. Uh, there's additional oils, not just the volatiles, even though the essential oil is still has the same terminology, uh, the processing actually results in a slightly different type of oil with more components. So let's talk a little bit about quality and safety. Uh, we, we do use robust testing and analysis to ensure safety and identity. And the standards for this come from, uh, these are three of the major sources, the essential oils by Gunther, the Fenaroli's Handbook of Flavor Ingredients by Burdock, Essential Oil Safety Guide by Tisserand and Young, and these and other monographs and sources of scientific information they give specific chemical and physical properties that you test for to make sure that if you're calling it a certain genus, species, part of the plant sourced oil, that it really is from that source and, and is pure. So how are essential oils tested? First of all, there's sensory, what we call organoleptics. You, you look at the color, the appearance, the odor, you, we test specific gravity, which is the density, and it varies from each oil to oil, but it's a very tight range for each oil. Refractive index is where a specific wavelength of light is shining through a specific quantity of oil, and it measures the refraction, the, the bending of the light in that material, the way light, that wavelength of light acts in that oil. And again, the refractive index is, is different for each oil. Optical rotation, and it's mostly used to look for synthetics. Re, uh, optical rotation is the same technique we use to distinguish between natural and synthetic amino acids 
or natural and synthetic vitamin D, for example. Gas chromatography, which has some other detectors on there, flame ionization and mass spectrometry, uh, that is showing you a fatty acid analysis. So it separates the components of the oil. So we can match that to a reference standard. Infrared absorption index is a chemical fingerprint. And I believe the next slide is gonna show you an example of that. Uh, so an infrared analysis of the oil is going to show a unique uh, graph to show you what's in there. That again is matched to a reference standard. Uh, heavy metals, and I emphasize it's only for cold pressed oils because steam distilled oils, the heavy metals don't get carried up in the steam. They're not lighter than air like a cloud. They're heavy metals. So the, the cold pressed oils are more likely to have heavy metals than uh, steam distilled oil. And therefore typically only the cold pressed oils are tested for lead, for example. We look for active chemical components and marker compounds. And one example would be the carvacrol in oil of oregano, the thymol in thyme oil, the menthol in mint oils, et cetera. Uh, and there's certain ratios and expected uh, presence of oil of these components in the oils. And we do look for synthetics. We look for non-labeled essential oils. We look for diluted uh, oils like carrier oils in there. These are all real world issues that we have to watch out for to ensure that we could put on our label that it's 100% pure essential oil. Now we've got chemists who have worked on this in some cases for decades uh, that advise us on the chemistry of the oils and, and help establish our standards and our specifications for testing. We even have a toxicologist on staff to review safety data. And I'm gonna present some of that to you in a, a few minutes here. And so all products, all samples go through this rigorous testing and we do not do any animal testing and there's no animal ingredients in the essential oils. They're cruelty free. All of our essential oils from now are non-GMO project verified. Uh, they all carry the non-GMO project butterfly logo, except for the smaller sizes where there's no room on the label but they're all non-GMO project verified. We do have a number of organic oils, probably close to 20 uh, certified organic oils, and they will carry the USDA organic seal and they're third party certified as the non-GMO certification is. And all of our essential oils have the PETA cruelty-free certification which means that they are not tested on animals. So again, it's not gonna be on all the labels because of the size of certain labels. Our very small bottles just don't have room. Uh, and of course we implement label changes when we're doing a new label printing run. So they're not always immediate, uh, but they're all cruelty free. They're all non-GMO and certain ones are certified organic as well. Now, when we test, we actually have the same certification for NOW's in-house labs as third-party labs and contract labs have. So we actually have the same certification and our certification is for more advanced and difficult processes than most labs will get. So this accreditation means we meet all the technical and quality benchmarks required for laboratory accreditation. We have a fully accredited, third-party accredited lab. And here's our lab certifications uh, for both chemical and biological testing. So this is the standard in most countries, is the ISO standard for testing labs. Now, some oils claim to be therapeutic grade, but unfortunately, that's simply a marketing term. There is no independent organization that establishes grades or standards. Uh, and so this appears to be a purely marketing term to distinguish one brand from another uh, through a non-official 
certification. So when you're looking at our oils, you will not find microbiological contaminants, harmful pesticides. They're not irradiated. There's no synthetic chemicals added, and there's no carrier or vegetable oils added to them. And you'll see a couple examples on the right that we do have roll-ons and we do have kits, including organics. And pesticides is one question that we get a lot. Are there pesticides in essential oils? And the answer typically is no. Uh, in one European database, over 73,000 tests performed on essential oils and about 99.45% of the samples, the pesticides were non-detectable. Now we do test for pesticides. Pesticide testing is actually one of the things that we're ISO certified for. And we especially test the organics because they're not supposed to have any detectable pesticides. And in one or two cases, we have rejected material coming in where we found pesticides in something that was certified organic and we rejected the material. We do not believe most companies who are bottling essential oils are doing pesticide testing as we are though. But the risk is very low. And here's an example of some of the testing we do. This example is for organic eucalyptus oil. On our organic oils, you'll see a greenish tint to the label and the USDA logo in the bottom left. So on the top right, there's a gas chromatogram which separates the major components, fatty acids, terpenes, things like that. And then at the bottom is your infrared spectrum, your chemical fingerprint. On the far bottom left, there's specific gravity, which is density and refractive index. And you'll notice those numbers are very narrow range and they're different for each oil. The, as the infrared spectrum is different for each oil, as the gas chromatogram is different for each oil because they have different components. But this represents some of the testing I, I was talking about earlier. So we've got over 80 essential oils. I think we're close to 90 now. Uh, at least 17 organic ones. Uh, it might be closer to 20. Uh, I'm not necessarily up to date on this. Uh, about two dozen diluted blends and pure blends. And the difference is we sometimes blend essential oils together to make some of these uh, interesting scented ones. But sometimes we'll add a, a very expensive essential oil to jojoba oil, organic jojoba oil as a base. And it will say right on the front, it's 15% pure or 20% pure or, or things like that versus 100% pure of a single oil. So there are some diluted blends, but uh, we also blend pure essential oils as well. We have a range of sizes from one ounce or 30 milliliter, a third of an ounce are the tiny ones. We, we go up to 16 ounce and people are using peppermint oil and things in larger sizes. And there's about 600 drops in a one ounce or 30 milliliter bottle of essential oil. So this shows uh, some of our organic oils. This isn't a complete list, but uh, some of them on the left. So you could see kind of the range we have and uh, some of the blends we have on the right. And there's a lot of information on nowfoods.com. There's an essential oil category and there's a lot of information we post there. For example, essential oil safety. Only certain oils are food grade. Some plant sources are not from foods. Some of them might contain toxins. Organic versus conventional does not determine if something is food grade or not. And there are federal regulations guiding this. So the most important one is the regulation generally regarded as safe for food use or grass status, G-R-A-S. And that's because some essential oils are used as flavor ingredients and the grass level 
is you look in the red there, it says the defined safe maximum concentration limit in edible foods. These are typically low. How much peppermint oil would you use to make a batch of candy? Maybe a few drops for a whole batch. So you, you see these are very, very, very strong. If, if you look at how much peppermint oil would be in a cup of peppermint tea, it's a tiny fraction of a drop per cup. And you might be doing 20, 30 cups of tea to equal one drop of essential oil. So essential oils are very concentrated, very strong. And in most cases, one drop is far above the level that's acceptable as safe for food use. This information is on our webpage, by the way, essential oil safety. These oils do not have grass status and should not be ingested, swallowed. So that includes the, you'll see the, the pine tree type ones, uh, frankincense, which there are some extracts of, of frankincense that are used orally. They're called boswellia or boswellin. And those are the ones that are safe and effective to take orally. Frankincense oil has not been shown or approved to be safely used orally. Uh, eucalyptus, pennyroyal has a toxin in there. Wintergreen oil has a toxin in there. And some of them like eucalyptus, you can use in oral hygiene. That is not internal use. Toothpaste mouthwash is not food use. These oils are all potentially food grade, but they have to be packaged in a food GMP facility, a, a facility following the, the rules for safely using food. Also, uh, they have to be safely diluted to the level that's approved for grass. Uh, in other words, if you have to add, you know, maybe 3% essential oil to something or 1% essential oil to something to flavor it, that might be the level you have to dilute it to to use it safely. So there's all these requirements. The original oil has to be food and it has to be processed according to food, good manufacturing practices, every step of the way from the supplier to the bottler. And you'll see your, your spices, your, uh, your citrus, chamomile, those kind of things, the teas. Uh, these are common ones. You'll probably recognize most of them. Now, as I mentioned earlier, between one to three percent is the typical amount of essential oil you would put in a carrier oil, like if you want to make a massage oil or something. Now, again, this is on our webpage, nowfoods.com, kids EO safety. These are the oils that are generally safe for children in diffusers or topically diluted. There's very few that are universally considered safe for children. Clary sage, orange, lavender, frankincense oil. Some oils are not safe for children at various ages. And you'll see a list of about 10 or so on not safe for children two years and under. But there's one that's not safe for even teens, wintergreen. Wintergreen does contain a potential toxin and you do not want to eat it orally. All the wintergreen products that are sold like uh, gum or candies are typically artificially sweetened for this reason. And of course, pet safety is an important issue for many of us. The essential oils are very concentrated. It is not recommended to put on the coats or fur of animals. Uh, unless directed by a veterinarian for a specific condition. Uh, it is okay to put, uh, for example, certain ones in a collar, like a flea collar, that is acceptable. Uh, diffusion around dogs, dogs is the most acceptable way to use essential oils. Uh, they typically are, are tolerant of it. It's important to note no pet should be in a room with essential oils unless they can leave the room they have to be free to leave if they're uncomfortable. Cats do not tolerate essential oils well. They do not detoxify them as well as dogs either. Uh, and citrus oils especially 
tend to give uh, dermatitis to cats. So be especially careful around cats, even more so than dogs. Birds are very sensitive. You should not diffuse anywhere around birds. The canary in the coal mine is a real thing. And fish tanks, if you diffuse next to an open fish tank, if the oil settles on top, you might end up with smothering all the fish in a tank. I, I spoke uh, a year or two ago to someone who works in a health food store, and this happened to her twice before she figured out it was the essential oils killing all her fish. There's a lot of recipes on our webpage. Some of them we have turned into blends already to make it easier. And our products are all over social media and in the media. HGTV magazine, People magazine, Prevention, et cetera. And we do, par we do have a partnership with uh, various influencers as well. And these are some of the uh, things that they've produced. And for example, some of our blends, the, uh, we do offer them, and these are some of the ads we put out for them. And these are some of the uh, social media influencers who have promoted our products, who have uh, used our products. And we're proud to be used by many uh, celebrities and, and influencers. And if you have questions, you can ask at your local store. But if, if you or even people in the store want to ask questions, we do have a technical staff that answers product questions. 888 Now Foods, product info at nowfoods.com. And we're answering about 97% of all calls live. We're happy to take questions from stores or consumers about any of our products and their uses. So for more information, you can go to our website at nowfoods.com slash essential oils, Facebook, Now Foods Official, Instagram, Now Foods Official, and we also have a YouTube page. So these are all resources that are available for you if you do have more questions or wanna learn more about the essential oils provided by Now. And I do thank you for attending this presentation. Wow, thank you, Neil. That was such great information. It really was. Thank you again. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And please be sure to subscribe to Natural Grocer's channel and watch for more presentations in the future. Thanks again, Neil. My pleasure.